Kia ora. I'm Drew. <laughs> Waiting for my dog. There it is. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be talking about a portion of the work um, that we're doing in a project about ma mapping ecosystem services and assessing impacts. And um, as Vera Rulins mentioned yesterday, we're interested in quantifying and mapping biogenic habitat structure. So this is biologically generated structure that's created by things like kelps or sponges or bryozoans or soft corals that grow on the seafloor and they grow, grow up into the water column and they create vertical three-dimensional relief off of the seabed. So that creates hiding places and settlement sites for a variety of juvenile fish and vertebrates. So that's a really important ecosystem service uh, because it bolsters the populations of Kaimoana that um, New Zealanders care about, such as scallops and snapper. Um, biogenic habitat structure is also quite susceptible to a variety of, of disturbances, including bottom trawling and um, the loading of sediments um, to, to the coastal environment. Oh, shucks. Um, and so um, we are trying to map this biogenic habitat structure. We know what it is, we know why it's important, but it's very difficult to know where biogenic habitat structure occurs across the marine estate because of the difficulty of observing the seabed um, underneath all of that water. So we've developed a way of predicting where biogenic habitat structure will be using a, 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 something we call an ecosystem principles approach. And basically this is, um, we've, we've got simple ecological rules that we can link to um, basic physical data such as depth um, and substrate type um, that you can get from, for example, from navigational charts. And we've used um, these types of, this combination of ecological rules and physical data to generate maps at a scale of, for example, here, um, 14,000 square kilometers across the Hauraki Gulf. Um, the maps are not strictly quantitative. They're more about relative differences in where biogenic habitat structure will be. Um, so the, the darker colors are where we think it's going to be highest, um, and the lighter colors is where we think it's going to be lowest. So maps are only really useful if they're a reasonable representations of reality. So we've put a lot of effort into trying to validate these maps. And so we went out to an area um, in the outer part of the Hauraki Gulf around Great Bear Island where there's low suspended sediment loads and levels of disturbance, relatively speaking. Um, we went to 57 different sites around this area that had differing levels of predicted um, biogenic structure, so different colors, and then we used drop cameras um, to actually physically or to, to visually observe the seabed and to um, rate what was actually present in each of those map squares. <clears throat> and as you can see, so when we went to each of these sites, we dropped the camera down and we ranked the levels of biogenic habitat structure on a scale from basically high um, all the way down to the ranking of five, which is low. So high is areas that are um, lush uh, based on the densities and the heights of the biogenic structure, so the kelps and the large sponges and things. And you can see that the observations um, that we made with the cameras match up really quite well to the predictions that we made using this, this ecosystem principles technique. Um, definitely, we can differentiate areas of high biogenic um, structure from medium to low. One important thing to remember about these maps is that their predictions of where habitat, biogenic habitat structure ought to be um, if there hasn't been a lot of disturbance or, or habitat degradation. So the camera shows where the, what, what the seabed actually looks like, and the maps are predictions of where, the, where we think biogenic habitat structure is going to be. Um, and so using these differences between observed and actual, we can actually understand a little bit about um, the effects of, of human activities that are degrading the marine environment. And on a more positive note, the maps can also be used as, an, as to identify sites that may have good um, restoration potential. So if we can eliminate or minimize types of seabed disturbance, these are areas where we expect high biogenic structure to, to develop uh, once again. So it's about recovery as well. So this is important as we're moving forward and studying a program where we're trying to understand dis, um, degradation and recovery dynamics. Um, and this is also feeding into uh, marine spatial planning because there's um, desperately needed uh, information um, 
for on ecosystem services, spatially in the marine space. So I just want to um, thank lots of people. Uh, this is the culmination of lots of work over lots of years, um, and um, we're actually expanding now to other parts uh, of New Zealand, and um, we're doing field work in the Marlborough Sounds um, starting this week, and we've got maps that are um, out at the New Zealand scale now as well. So thank you very much.